Well, good day, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to have a look at uh, another one of the series of kits I actually didn't want to buy. And the model shop, and I had the wife with me, said, oh, come on, build me a London taxi. So I got bought it, got it for a good price. I thought, all oh, right, let's build the London taxi. I always find it a bit of a boring thing, but then I watched a couple of videos what the Austin FX4 is all about and where it comes from. This is real uh, living, breathing London history. So, uh, and talking about history, the uh, kit has some real uh, interesting history as well. The London taxi, and I'm not quite sure if it is the same mold. It could possibly be, and if you see right now, you see it's not a typical Revell mold. It's from Imai, 1979, all the way through. The first Revell was in 1986. And what you're looking at now is the 2011 repop. And then there are a couple of uh, maroon repops from Aoshima with the maroon um, art on the box. Here we go. Let's have a quick look what it looks like here. Put on some light. Here we go. There you go. Gives an idea how you can build it. A bit more history. At the back, just some advert. Right, now what actually came in the box, and as we always do, we haven't thrown it on the floor, which I have, is we have a look at the instruction manual. And here's the first thing, which kind of gives you an idea that this is not a 2011 kit. Uh, it is uh, a lot older than that. And you can see these Revell instructions. Yeah, they were around in the 80s, I would say. And uh, lots of writing. Gives you a lot of uh, good ideas what the text is all about. Here you have the typical Revell color callouts. Love them or hate them, here they are. That's actually a quite smaller palette for Revell. They normally have 50,000 colors in their color callouts, some of them quite unnecessary, but this is all right here. It gives you an idea of the spruce, and then it starts building right at the bottom, and it starts funny enough with the wheels and the axle. It's an interesting way to start a kit, but there we are. Then uh, up there, so we do the whole suspension part. Then here is the inside, and obviously you will see that once we look at the parts, what that looks like, the divider windows, the hinges for the uh, bonnet or hood, that gives you uh, the idea of the final, putting the final thing together. Then we have this, which I would assume is possibly the air filter. If it would be World War II, I would say it's a wooden driven car. <laughs> but yeah, I like that. It's a nice anachronism. And uh, more details on the engine bay right over here and uh, how you pop everything in and then uh, the final assembly at the bottom and it gives you a couple of ideas how to attach the few chrome parts which come with it and here at the bottom it's just how to add the very few decals which are in the kit I mean when the taxi Famously is a very plain affair. So here we go. We have a look at the details. Let's put it that way around So you can see them right over here. Let's just put them on the hand. Maybe it will flow. It does. Here we go So you can see we have a uh, bottom right. We have the uh, taxi sign and the dashboard decals different uh, different registration numbers different uh, taxi numbers and we even have some advert if you wish to add some advert to your taxi it's a dialer cap or computer cap advert right over here and well, let's have a look at the glass which is packaged like this unusually in other words it has a bit of cardboard here to to uh, support the glass sheet which i find awesome Right, and here you have it. Glass actually looks not bad at all, if it is that old and kit. A little bit of distortion, but yeah, if you look inside the car from the outside, I don't think you will pick it up. The front and back, you have the side windows, which are all in one piece, and then the divider window, which can divide the driver from the 
passenger. Right, then let's have a go at what is in these uh, funny little plastic bag. Let's put it all out. Everything is out. So we obviously have the tires, which actually looks quite decent. I like them. Here we go. Let's put it in here. Don't know if you can see. Here we go. Here we go. That, that gives you a good idea. It actually has a very nice thread. There doesn't seem to be the usual seam in the middle as well. So these are very nice tires. Also nice and soft. <coughs> I apologize. Then we have a couple of pulley caps right over here. We have a steel axle. We have two uh, little pins, metal pins. I, get, I think it's for the front wheels, if I saw that correctly. And we have a bit of cable and we have a bit of hose in order to detail your engine. And that's very nice. I'm very impressed with the tires, I must say. These are better tires than I've seen in a long time from Rival. Really nice. And then uh, yeah, the steel axle shows you again that it is probably an older vintage kit. Might even be from the 70s at the very latest, 1986. 1986. Right. right, then let's have a look at the chrome. And here we are. Chrome, let's switch off that line. Maybe you can see better. Here you go. There's the chrome. It's the grill, famous one. Quite sure what everything is. These, obviously, uh, these are the hubcaps right over here. And looking at that, I will probably have to dechrome those. Yeah, if you look, you go. If you look at them, how they are mounted, probably means uh, cutting off, dechroming, uh, making them beautiful, and rechrome them again. The same probably has to be done for the bumpers because there, where the bumpers are, you will always see that. If you don't want to see that, I'm afraid you will have to rechrome. So that's what we have to do. And uh, wipers and mirror we have over here. Right, that's a, uh, I think the grill can stay as it is. If it goes, if it sinks inside the uh, body, then it will be fine. Some of the stuff you will probably have to dechrome if you don't like the attachment points to be visible on your model. Then the spruce come in two colors. One is black and that's the only black. It has some wheels right over here. Uh, we have seen these hinges for the uh, bonnet and there is the bonnet itself, all molded in black. And this obviously is where your radiator piece goes in. Then we have uh, the bottom pan right over here. Everything is molded in, so you have to detail it uh, on the chassis, so no apart uh, exhaust or any of that uh, suspension. That's all you have to detail that afterwards. Here's part of the very simple suspension, which to be fair, was never very complicated. Mm -hmm. To start with, radiator over here, here that uh, beautiful barrel which goes in in front, and here we have the rather simple dashboard. Then right over here we have uh, the engine which is also molded in so it has to be detailed inside here which will be very very interesting but we're going to do that why not and then we have this is the divider you can either use the plain divider or you can use the oh no, i guess i'm quite sure yeah i think you can use the plain divider or you can use the divider with the flap seats that's up to you then the seats are all molded in so that has to be detailed inside the cap. So the detailing will be done more in an artistic way, I want to say so, because you have to do it all by either um, detailing with a spray gun and, and covering everything, or you do it with a paintbrush. Let's have a look at this, which obviously is the body. There's a bit of stabilizer here in front, which is cool. 
then this is obviously where the bonnet will fit in and uh, it's molded in black it's not molded as good as that you can just polish it up and clear coat it no 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 you will have to you will have to go uh, and probably prime and paint it um, the uh, gaps between the doors are uh, they are realistic they are not unrealistic they are actually quite good just from the scale point of view but i'm not quite sure if you couldn't you know paint them close very quickly so i will see if i just make them a little bit deeper and there you have the roof and that's it that's all there is to it it's not a complicated kit as far as building is concerned it probably can be a bit of a challenging kit as far as painting is concerned because you have to do a lot of detail painting on molded in parts and if you want to have it uh, look decent then obviously you have a lot of masking and spraying and masking and spraying and masking and spraying will be required but that's what we do that's why we are model builders i hope you enjoyed that review i uh, certainly had fun doing it and all the best and greetings from cape town cheers